Today, I'm making a smoky butternut bisque and I have everything cut up and at the end of the video, you'll see what the ingredients look like, I'll call it whole, because now they're chunks of things and I don't know what level of, of experience you've had in the kitchen, but when you look at it, you'll see what we were talking about, what the pears look like, what the, what the whole squash looked like, uh, what the squash once peeled and sliced in half looked like. Um, this recipe is going to cook in a uh, Instapot. You could do it on the stove. I highly recommend that you consider getting an Instapot if you don't have one. You can get them at uh, Costco. This is a eight quart. They sell a six quart. Um, you can get them for $80 and they will save you that much money in not running to stores or fast food restaurants or using processed food constantly because what you can do so quickly and you'll see what I mean. So let's get cooking. All right, so I have done a step that you do not have to do in this recipe. First, let me tell you that I have twice the amount of ingredients that you're gonna find on the recipe. In other words, I've doubled it, why? My motto is, if I'm gonna mess up my kitchen, I'm gonna make it worth <laughs> the mess. And I want lots of food for my freezer. I call it my food library out there. Uh, and we have a freezer in the garage and a freezer in the house. And I like going to that freezer and pulling out, like we did last night, a, um, a, a pizzoli that I made and froze a number of uh, containers of. And before that, it was a pumpkin soup that I had lots of containers of. But everything's getting a little low, and so I wanted to have a lot to freeze today. So what's happening here, you see the steam? is that I have the saute function on, and the Instapot allows you to do that. This recipe calls for 10 ounces of onion, and you're gonna get the recipe, so I'm not gonna repeat the amounts of everything, but um, you can simply throw it in without browning it. I take that extra step, and it's mentioned in the recipe, because I like what caramelizing it, the juices of onion does to flavor. It kind of, it enriches the flavor of whatever you do. So in a lot of recipes, it will call for, uh, they'll call it sauteing. We don't use oil, I don't use oil in my cooking, and neither does Chef AJ. As a matter of fact, all of her recipes are SOS free, salt, oil, sugar free. Uh, but I saute with a little bit of broth, and can you see, whoops, I have to move this realize I couldn't get it out there. Can you see how nicely browned these onions are? You can smell that they are richly flavored. Their juices caramelized. I put a little bit of water from time to time so they didn't burn and it deglazed the pan. Every time I did that, bubble up, brown, stir it, it's deglazed. The pan is now it has no um, you know, pieces that are stuck in there. And what that's done is that's simply given me a little more flavor, not necessary. We just did this recipe at Rancho La Puerta in um, a, a health and wellness spa, and the people adored it. She did three classes, and um, this was part of one of them, and it wasn't. It was so simple that we simply threw the onion in. So do whichever you prefer. I'm also going to then throw in the rest of the ingredients, which include two pounds of peeled and seeded butternut squash. You'll see in the photos at the end, whoops, what that looks like. I'm going to retrieve a piece of squash that escaped me. I'm then throwing in two ripe pears or um, two big sweet apples. Well, because I'm doubling this recipe, and that was four pounds of squash, because I'm doubling the recipe, I'm going to do one of each. In other words, I'm going to do two pears and two apples, throw in these big chunks. You can see I need the eight quart because this wouldn't have fit in the six quart. Again, I've doubled it. Then I'm going to add everything else but one ingredient 
uh, that we put in at the end, which happens to be plant-based milk. So I have oats, just rolled oats. I have, normally, I would be putting in six tablespoons. I'm putting in 12 tablespoons of chopped garlic. And I want to show you what I do because I like things to go fast. I buy my garlic, um, sorry for leaving. I buy my garlic in big fat cloves. I find it at um, my health food market called Clark's uh, that are organic. I just prefer that. But the big cloves are simply easier to work with. I roll the skins off of them and then I put them in this handy Tupperware device, the, the um, I think they call it chop and pour. You can find it from a Tupperware consultant, uh, the mini chop and pour, or chop mix and pour, mix and, hmm. And what happens is with the garlic in here, a few pulls and the garlic is chopped to this degree. Now, I chopped well, about 18 cloves of garlic, and I think it was actually more than that. And what I didn't use goes in my little jar, I call it my garlic jar, that goes in the refrigerator. And that way, every time I make something that calls for fresh garlic, I have the freshest of garlic, it's already cut or already uh, diced, minced. And um, one teaspoon of that minced garlic is one clove of garlic. So I used two tablespoons. Oh, I messed up. I used two tablespoons, which is three teaspoon per tablespoon. So I'm only up to six. No wonder I have so much of this left. Let me get out my tablespoon again because I should have done double that. So this is another three, that's three, six, nine. And this is another three. These are tablespoons. So now I have 12 tablespoons or 12 teaspoons. In other words, 12 minced uh, cloves of garlic. Okay. Oh, I'm glad I caught that because the garlic gives it a, a lot of flavor. All of these things that we use right now give it enough flavor that I don't have to add salt. So I'm adding to this chipotle powder. I'm adding to this smoked paprika, and this is important. You'll buy paprika, powdered paprika, and you'll also find smoked powdered paprika. You need the smoke for this because this is a smoky biscuit. It really makes a difference. I happen to like this brand, Local Spicery, because they don't irradiate, there's no gluten, there's no GMO, and heavily, uh, peppers, all peppers, including bell peppers, the red and the green, are um, heavily sprayed. So if I'm going to use the spices, I might as well either use organic or those that aren't. And this is a chili pepper, the true chipotle, and a smoked paprika, all naturally milled. So local spicery is one brand that I happen to like, but you can get smoked paprika and different kinds of chilies at, um, at even uh, Trader Joe's, and they're very well priced. And then Benson's Table Tasty is a salt substitute that's really quite nice. And I use, this one happens to be their Gusto flavor. You can just use their original or their Zesty, which happens to have a bit of a lemon uh, taste to it. And I'm putting in three cups of water, but in this case, remember I'm doubling. So I've got six cups of water here, and that's it. I'm going to give it a mix. Um, where are, oh, here, pull this out a little bit. Kind of get the spices into the moisture. And if you think about it, most soups are going to call for a broth to go in there. A lot of them do. This is so simple and really inexpensive. I went to the farm store, bought a couple of butternut squashes. These pears were almost overripe, which I wanted. I wanted them soft and really sweet. Had some apples that I got from Costco and a 
carton of what 12 they're organic um, I believe they were Gala or maybe Fuji and then my seasonings and water let me make sure I've got everything and I do I'll be putting in some plant milk at the end and I'm going to set this for believe it or not six minutes pressure cook six minutes and I'll be back to you um, to show you what we do when we finish <laughs> hello I'm back so we have a pot full of well what's going to be dinner tonight um, our smoky butternut squash soup that cooked for six minutes the the um, pressure could have been released right away and I would have blended it but instead I took off for hours it's now four o'clock and I think I did this at maybe I don't know 11 in the morning um, called someone who was at the house and said after about 15 20 minutes uh, of it sitting under pressure and it could have been 10 minutes and I could have released or I could have left it a lot longer. I just said unplug it uh, because that gave it a chance to cool down for the, um, the pressure to come down naturally. Didn't matter with this soup. So it's on warm, cancel that, open the pot, and you know it can go either on this side or that side and I'm just going to take it off to get it out of the way. And I have an immersion blender here. I want to recommend this. It's an inexpensive, relatively inexpensive way to blend a soup without having to spoon it into a food processor or I have my Vitamix. This would, the Vitamix would do neat work of this, but when you're doing a hot soup and you put it into a container, you have to be careful to vent it because the pressure of the steam could cause it to actually send a plume of, of um, hot liquid everywhere. So I like to use the immersion blender. And let me show you what I have here. Oh, I have a big pot of wonderful. Can you see? What is this? Apples and pears. And I should say that we could have used canned pears or jarred pears in their own juice, no sugar. And as AJ does, she keeps that around and you can get butternut squash and let it sit on your counter forever and throw this soup together in no time at all. Most of us have onions around and once you buy your spices, you have them. Okay, so what the immersion blender does is, I'm gonna get it, it takes two there. You wanna make sure that you never get your fingers anywhere around the end because the end is exposed and owie. Okay, and I'm putting it in and then I'm getting both finger pads. This one happens to be a piece of art. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna bring you really close. See if you can see what I'm up to here. Mm, not really, huh? Oh, let's see if that helps. Look at that. All right, here we go. Both push. Whoops. You don't want to lift it out too much, or what you end up with is what you just saw, a bit of a splash. So I'm just moving it around in here at a slight angle it works really well and I'm kind of pushing things down and what I have floating around is an apple and pear they kind of float I'm going to push them down and mash them so this is going to take me a couple of minutes but easy as can be going to get a blended soup here. You see a piece of the capture, another piece of the capture, and another piece of the capture. I'm 
may be just a little done. Now, the last ingredient to be put in here, and I'll go ahead and put it in now, is plant milk. And remember, I doubled this. The plant milk in the recipe, you will see, is one cup. This is two. And I use soy milk a lot. Organic soy milk. Soy milk has the same protein count as dairy milk. In other words, if you think, oh, I want to make sure I get plenty of protein, to give it a boost, because this is a vegetable base, all vegetables have protein, but to give it a boost, a couple of cups of soy milk is like putting a pint of regular milk, but I don't want regular milk. I don't want the hormones. I don't want the Oh, I'm not going to say what I was going to say because it's just disgusting, but I'm going to say it. The level of pus, because all milk has pus. Only so much is allowed, but it's there. So, eh, I don't do dairy and I haven't for years. Um, our skin's better for it. Our bones are better for not doing dairy. Uh, but that's another story. Okay. Oh, this is looking so pretty. Now, what I'm going to do before I eat it well, it is taste to see if it has what I want. I like a little spiciness. I may add some sriracha to it. But this is about as blended as it needs to be. I'm going to tilt it a little and give it. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm playing now. And if I miss, it's going to be in my face and you'll laugh. All right, I'm done. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll put this in a container of water. The measuring cup is down here. And just kind of shoot it. Okay, and then I'll clean it later, but I'm gonna unplug it just so that I don't have to think about it any further. And look at this soup. Oh, sorry. Look at that. Now I'm going to plate a bowl of it. Push it back. Whoops. I'm going to taste it. It's, look at this, it's velvety. Oh, such a nutritious soup. Now, there's no greens in here, so I'm going to serve steamed broccoli tonight. Oh, that is so flavorful. You're going to love it. If you are used to having salt in everything, you may think, boy, lots of flavor, but I want to add some salt. Go ahead, add some salt. Um, I'm going to leave this salt, oil, and sugar free. You could, don't even think about sugar, but you can add some salt if you want to. I'll probably add a little sriracha. What really looks pretty, I'm going to show you, hold on. Okay. Get the ladle, and I wanted to show you this Titan T I T A N um, peeler. I have a Tupperware vegetable peeler, but if I tried to use that, I love it. I've used it for decades. I've got several of them, but if I had tried to use, and I've tried the Tupperware vegetable peeler or a weaker peeler on the skin of the Butternut squash, I would not have been able to peel it. This, no problem at all. I just got this on Amazon. And I was able to peel the squash beautifully, so I'm just getting a thin layer and leaving all that nutrition, which is right inside the skin of almost everything, um, intact. And I didn't mention it earlier, so I wanted to show it to you now. So I'm going to plate my soup. That'll be about enough. I'm going to sprinkle. So you know what? I'm gonna put one more because as I tilted it, it kind of um, oh, left a rim and I just want this to look pretty. I'm going to put some finely, oh, you can see. I'm gonna put some finely chopped red onion. If you get used to eating raw onion, eat it cooked as well, but also eat it raw. 
onion is so nutritious, believe it or not. And, let's see, mm, it's nutritious cooked and raw, so you want a little of both at times. This is Sriracha. It's not the brand you may be used to. This one is from Trader Joe's. Ah, I'm gonna put a couple of drops. And then I'll um, spread it in when I'm about to eat. All right, so tonight we're going to have a bowl of this beautiful soup. We're going to have steamed broccoli. I'm going to serve this with grain. You can use any grain, quinoa, millet, oat groats, um, brown rice, wild rice. I like to mix my oat groats, which I have for breakfast, with uh, quinoa. Quinoa is a complete protein, a high protein grain, which is really a seed. So I'll heat this up in here, uh, in the microwave, and you're gonna say, no, Nan, so heat it in a pan if you want, <laughs> or in your oven um, to reheat it. And we're going to serve this. I put spoons full in my cream soups or any of my soups, and then I kind of uh, combine a bite of one and a bite of the other. And um, we're going to have a um, tomato, oh no, we're going to have a, uh, I was gonna say tomato cucumber salad, which we have a lot with red onion. But today we are also going to have the watermelon, or instead the watermelon cucumber mint salad, the OMG watermelon salad that um, I just produced a video for. So we're gonna have an amazing meal. And I'm gonna show you how I'm making a black bean chili that is almost meaty, full of something that is not an animal product. And I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna be out of the picture a good part of the time so that you can be close enough to see what I'm doing. But this recipe is adopted from Chef AJ. Let me put it on pressure for pressure cook. There. And it calls for three cups of chopped onion. I wanna show you how easily I can chop three cups of chopped onion or three cups of onion. This is something called a Vidalia Chop Wizard. Boing, I've just hit another um, big slice of it. And the next recipe I'm going to do calls for two and a half cups of onion. Well, I have just about two and a half cups of onion because in this pot, I already have chopped onion that I have sauteed I have chopped carrot that I also chopped in the Chop Wizard. You don't have to have one of those, but when I'm doing a lot of cooking and I'm doing this and then another dish, I, it's easier to just whack through that. And I kind of like, not kind of, I do. I like these little cubes, um, mm, excuse me, mm, that are created and even chopped. So I've sauteed eight cloves of garlic, and I'll show you an easy way to do that. And gosh, this is three, three and a half cups of onion, and it's several carrots, and I'm gonna, and I put in eight cloves of garlic. And one way I do work with garlic is I like this little garlic roller. You can get it on Amazon. I don't even know what it's called. I think it's called a garlic roller. But by rolling big fat, um, cloves of garlic, the skin separates out. These were already done, so I can't show you how the skins just separate out. I put it into this little Tupperware mini chopper. You can get this also, mini food chopper on Amazon or from a Tupperware person. And by simply pulling the cord probably four or five times, all that garlic, that was about 15 cloves, has now been reduced to, look, this very fine chop. I then spoon it into my cute little garlic container I keep in the refrigerator, 
and one teaspoon of this chopped garlic is one clove. So it's very convenient. I'll use this in my next recipe. That's in there as well. Then I'm going to add two 14 ounce cans of fire roasted tomatoes. Well, in this case, two 14 ounce equals 28 ounces. So I'm using my 28 ounce can. I'm going to add to that three cans of black beans. Now this is Chef AJ's recipe and she calls for no salt black beans. I don't have that so I'm just putting in my organic black beans. So I'm going to have more sodium in this dish than you may want. In which case you might want to drain the beans and then just add water to it. Drain and rinse the beans, add water, and you can cut the sodium dramatically that way. I wanted this um, black bean broth, as I call it. The, If this were chickpeas, we'd call it aquafaba. And I don't know if this is called black bean fava. I don't know. But then that ingredient that I was referring to that's somewhat meaty is mushrooms. I'm putting in here two pounds of chopped mushrooms. They can be sliced. They can be roughly chopped. I chopped them, I chopped all the mushrooms. I got these from Costco because you can get a pound and a half of mushrooms for five fifty or five ninety or something like that. I chopped them into quarters. I'm sorry, I'm turning my back on you. And then I into quarters. I even kept the stems on here, just chopped them separately. And then I used this knife called a mezzaluna knife just a handy little gadget to go in and chop a little bit more. You've got to be really careful. It's quite sharp. And all of this is going in this pot. This is my eight quart Instapot. If you don't have an Instapot, you may want to consider it. It's one of the ways that you can spend less time in your kitchen and have more control. You set it and you can walk away. For example, I make oat groats in this. Two cups of rinsed oat groats, three cups of boiling water. I put a little salt, you don't need to. I set it for six minutes and then walk away for two hours. And I have beautiful oat groats that are just like barley or wheat berry or farro, but because I'm gluten-free, I don't eat those grains, but I love the oat groats and I make breakfast porridge out of them. And, oops, I wanted to put this in. I have a tablespoon of oregano, a tablespoon of cumin. I have a half a tablespoon of smoky paprika or smoked paprika. And I have some, um, chipotle powder or I could have used ancho powder or one of the other kind of chilies. Now that's looking kind of dry to me. I'm going to put in a couple of cups of water. I may even end up putting in more because we like a looser chili. As a matter of fact, I am. If I wanted this to be a very thick chili that maybe I was going to spoon over a baked potato and that's a great um, meat free meal then I would have it uh, with less water. Now these mushrooms are going to weep quite a bit. So there's going to be a lot of moisture in here. When this is finished in six minutes, I'm going to release pressure and add a, a, a 16 ounce bag of frozen corn. Then I'm gonna let it just sit and settle um, with the cover on just to get it hot throughout again and voila we've got dinner i think all soups all stews are better when they have had a chance to sit a day or two but we're not doing that because this is dinner tonight it is 10 minutes to five my husband and I will be eating by 5.30. That's going to be dinner. So I'm setting the Instant Pot to pressure cook. It's on high, and I'm going to set it for six minutes. 
that's when I'm going to take the pressure off because everything in here is pretty well, well, that's not true. I was gonna say pretty well cooked. Of course, we have the, the mushrooms that need to cook and it's on. Six minutes from now, I'm gonna release pressure. Make sure the pressure valve is off. Add 16 ounces a pound of frozen corn and voila. Um, enjoy. Try this. Let me know what you think. Bye. Hi, I'm back. Well, the black bean chili was cooking under pressure for six minutes. It took about 20 minutes to come up to pressure. And you can see I've kind of let it sit around for a while. The instant pot will count backwards in terms of the length of time after a dish has been finished. I've released the pressure. It took about five minutes for the pressure all to release and I pulled it out from under the cabinet. Otherwise, I don't think it's good for the cabinet to be, um, to have that steam shooting at it. But I get to open it now. Ta-da! And remember what the recipe calls for. Frozen corn, ah! Sorry you saw that. <laughs> All right. Oh my goodness, is this beautiful. I'll bring it up to you and show you. This is our dinner tonight. I began it, I won't be say I began it when we were talking earlier because I'd already sauteed the um, carrot and onion and I had already chopped that. So let's say I began at about 20 to five. We will be eating at 5.30 and I've got a stew. So I'm going to serve up our stew. That way you can see it. Oh, does this look good. And then, and remember it's gotten its protein from, and I like to do what they do in restaurants, just kind of wipe the rim so it looks a little prettier. I'm gonna put some chopped cilantro on it. I'm going to serve it with hot corn tortillas, organic. Put some chopped, green onion on it. Oh, yummy. Take a look. Doesn't that look beautiful? This is OMG watermelon salad. Oh my God, watermelon salad. This is what you do. You can get the small watermelons. I have half of it already cut up and I added a little that I have in the refrigerator from the last little watermelon. And I just wanted to show you how easy it is to do these. At the class, because at Rancho La Puerta, they grow most of the food that they serve. I shouldn't say most of the food, not the, they, well, they are, vegetarian there and and um, so they have fish that's pescatarian ovo lacto they also offer egg and milk and cheese but very limited amounts and um, but the the produce they grow most of and their watermelons had seeds so during the class the most time-consuming part of this recipe <laughs> was de-seeding watermelon which a lot of us haven't done for a long, long time. All right, so I'm simply, I had halved it, I cut the ends off, halved it. I'm going along the smile, I call this the smile of the melon, and I'll cube it. And one of the things I wanted to um, have you consider when you're looking at the amount that you're doing is that this is delicious for a day or two and then it gets a little soggy in which case you can blend it and turn it into a bit of a um, sort of gazpacho uh, a blended soup um, kind of like a refreshing slushy all right and that's that what am i going to put in this and do I need measuring cups? No, but to make a point while I was making it, I thought 
I would pull out my measuring cup just to show you. Chef AJ suggests that her favorite way of doing this is about twice as much watermelon as um, cucumber. I used a, uh, a Persian cucumber, so I didn't have to peel it. If I'm using a conventional cucumber, most of which are waxed, I would peel it first, I would slice it in half and just take a spoon and de-seed it. With the Persian cucumbers, the little guys that you can get, I get mine from Trader Joe's just down the street. I didn't bother. I didn't quite have half of the amount of watermelon as cucumber. Um, it's going to be fine. You just use whatever you have. So I ended up with what, about eight cups of watermelon. It would have been about six or seven had I not had a little bit in the refrigerator I wanted to add. And I have the cucumbers sliced in half and then in a slice beyond that. I could have cut them more finely. And what's next? I'm gonna add some lime juice, just fresh lime. Yum, 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 yum. And we're gonna do it to taste. Now I know I'm gonna want at least two halves, meaning this is gonna be about three tablespoons, depending on your, your lime. Some will render no more than a tablespoon and a half, but I think this is about three maybe even four, but I don't think so. And what did I do with my spoon? Oh, all right. And then I went outside. It's so much fun to have fresh mint in your garden, but you gotta be careful if you plant it in the ground, it will take over a bed. But I have a dedicated bed for mint, and this is just lovely. And I picked it, chopped it and let's see if this is the right amount and you know what this is all we put in the salad and you will be amazed at how flavorful it is i'm going to add a little more mint just because i like the way it looks with a little more i could chop easily and quickly some additional mint but I don't know that I'm going to want to. All right. Blending, blending, blending. We'll let it sit. I intend to eat all of this. My husband and I can and will before I have to turn it into a slushy. <laughs> because I know at Rancho La Puerta I was crazy about this. Mmm. That was a really big piece, so I filled my mouth with it. Mm. That is so good. I'm going to add a half of another lime. I happen to like it a little bit limey. The mint is fine. And ladies and gentlemen, this is your salad. Let's decorate it. <laughs> and I would say to you, bon appetit. <laughs>